Good morning. Good morning. It is Tuesday, August 1st, and we are joining in with a court hearing in the Rust case from the beginning. This is a Zoom hearing in New Mexico that is covering the defense motion to dismiss. So I'm going to give a brief road so far on where we are on Rust. And when we do a brief road so far, then we're going to get into this court hearing. The preliminary hearing in this case is set for over a week. The witness list has like 39, 43 some odd witnesses on it. That's a trial list, not a preliminary hearing list. It's wild. So we're going to do a brief road so far. Then we are going to jump in to the hearing in New Mexico. Again, this is a hearing over a motion to dismiss the indictment. I don't know what the prosecutors in Rust have been doing. This motion to dismiss was filed in May. Since then, the prosecutors filed additional amended informations. There are We are now on the third information uh, with new charges. This is regarding just defendant Hannah Gutierrez, and it's her name has been changed in the filing from Gutierrez-Reed to Gutierrez, so we're going with Gutierrez because it seems to be um, the preferred styling of her name. She is the armorer in this case. She has been charged with the involuntary manslaughter due to the fact that she was the armorer on the movie Rust and presumably loaded the gun that was then held by Alec Baldwin and shot um, the cinematographer on the film. So with the motion to dismiss, the state filed additional informations and amended informations with new charges. The defense is like, can you please stop filing information so we can handle the motion to dismiss? There is a lot of litigation going on. The last hearing got really fiery when the court was like, why is the prosecution just springing this on the defense and not turning over this witness with regard to the third amended information? So that's what we are going to hear about today. This is important um we did we did lose some passengers mid-flight that's okay though we'll find them again so it will be interesting to see what comes of this hearing before we get to the preliminary hearing next week this motion to dismiss legally is a very big deal for the defense especially with regard to the newer charges here including um including the tampering with evidence charge and things like that. So that's what we're going to hear about today. Um, and we're going to go through all of this afterwards too and your questions afterwards too. So let's just pull up this hearing and get into Zoom court. It's glad to see how many of you successfully navigated the airport and changed planes from you know Idaho now here to New Mexico. It was a short flight, but worth it, I think. And let us, thank you, we've made it, chat. Let us go. Some might be stuck at baggage claim. We're soldiering on, <laughs> we're soldiering on. Let's get this hearing started. Let me know if you have any trouble hearing. Let me, yeah, this is your captain speaking. Let me know if you have any difficulty with the in-flight um, audio visual system. Thank you. Lewis on behalf of the state of New Mexico. This is the Judge, special I prosecutor. Apologize. I cannot hear anybody on my computer. I don't know what's going on. Um, do you have headphones plugged in that aren't in your ears? I might have. You can't, can't hear, me? hear me. We can hear you. You cannot hear me. Okay, Judge. I cannot hear anybody else. I. I freaking hate. Can Google I um, log out and, and log back in? Why right are there? we not doing this yes. on Zoom? Oh, why are we not doing this on Zoom? Why are we not doing this on Zoom? <laughs> why? Why? Um, this is the judge in this case. <clears throat> judge, can you hear me now? Yes, I, we could hear you before. We could hear you before, sir. I'm sorry, Judge. I cannot hear on this <laughs> computer. Uh, I don't know sorry. what's going on with my computer. I hate Can Google I Meet. I feel in? for the lawyer. No, we I want to see you. I'll call in on this. Sir, this yeah. is a big hearing. if I can use hearing. my phone as a audio right, on this, uh, this setting, Judge. 
Thank you. Sir, do you Mr. have- Mr. Bowles, do you need the number to call in? Do you have- oh, do you, you can't hear me. Do you okay. not have headphones? I am not a cat. Your Honor, I am here. Oh, technology. I mean- one to connect your phone audio to your video. No, you're going to have to mute- your phone to listen and speak so, to the meeting. Oh, God. Mute, mute the Google Meet, though. Mute the video. Sir? Mute the video, though. Judge, can you hear me now through the phone? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Oh, yes, Judge, I can hear you now. I, I apologize. All right, that's perfect. Honor. No worries. No worries. All right. Technolo technology okay, and so lawyers don't always I go we, well. We together. got as far as Ms. Morrissey. We didn't uh, and Judge Jason Bowles and Todd Bullion are here for Hannah Gutierrez Reed. We didn't get very far, sir. Mr. Lewis, did you state your appearance? Yes, Your Honor, I apologize. Ms. Morrissey had yeah. entered the appearance for me, but Jason oh, Lewis... Okay. Oh, everybody's state. just got artwork right, behind them. And we'll mute our, mute our phones when we're not speaking so that we don't get an echo. All right, I'd first like to put on the record, um, I received an email so um, re regarding a withdrawal of a motion. Can you put that on the record, Ms. Oh, Morrissey? Who withdrew a motion? Uh, yes, Your Honor, after consulting uh, with our witness that prompted us to file the motion for protective order, that consultation was last night. Uh, she has agreed uh, not to uh, pursue a protective order, uh, so we are withdrawing the motion for protective order. Mr. Bowles, anything? All right. So in this Zoom hearing, there they have just uh, withdrawn a motion for protective order. The protective order was with regarding the identity of a witness. The identity of the witness was probably known to the parties anyway because it was the witness that goes to the last count of whether or not there was... Um, shenanigans with evidence i'll give you my thoughts on that count a little bit later um so i will give you my thoughts on those counts a little bit later we'll get we'll get into this kind of substance of that after court but the lawyer's just saying the witness doesn't care we can remove the protective order could this is someone that's going to be known to the defendant given the facts so that's that's what it is uh thank you your honor we, of course we have no objection judge all right, so please prepare an order to that effect, Ms. Morrissey, and I'll sign it. Thank yes, you. Yes, Your Honor. All right, so we're going to move on to uh, uh, Mr. Bowles or Ms. Uh, Gutierrez's motions. And I think, obviously, we're going to start with the first one and segue into, <laughs> no. into uh, the others. We are, we're going to um, have to chat is, about that. Is Laura, Laura Gillespie anybody's uh, assistant? All right. The court's trying to figure out who's calling in. All right, go ahead. When these hearings okay, are streamed, thank you, Your Honor, and I will. When these hearings are streamed, if you are not part of the hearing, don't call in. Just watch the stream. I've seen media mess this up. I've seen uh, content creators mess this up. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Start with the first one and, and segue into the second. And I'm I'm going to summarize, Your Honor, because I know this court uh, it always reads all the pleadings up on everything that's been filed. So I'm not going to repeat everything in the pleadings. Uh, what I will say is that I can't keep the... Uh, the first ground, Your Honor, that we have uh, cited to dismiss is a structural ground. We believe it is structural. And what I mean by that is, is uh, in March of this year, this court uh, entered an order after a hearing and ruled that once um, uh, the, the district attorney, Mary Carmack, uh, assigned a special prosecutor, and at the time it was Andrea Reed. Um, Ms. Carmack Altwise then lost authority to prosecute the case. She, in essence, handed the case over to Ms. Reed. Now, Which Judge, uh, is that ruling that this court made then prompted uh, Ms. Morrissey to be appointed a special prosecutor, and Ms. Uh, Carmack Altwise stepped out. However, before that happened, mm. the, uh, Ms. Carmack Altwise had not stepped out. She, in fact, uh, filed the first amended information back in January. Um, actually in February, February 17th, and in Fe by February 3rd, uh, Andrea Reed was already appointed. So in other words, there was a special prosecutor appointment at the time that the district attorney signed the uh, first amended information. Now, the state's... His argument is that, I'm just going to summarize real quick, since we have time during this hearing, the prosecutor for the district in New Mexico, assigned a special prosecutor. Hey, you take care of this case. 
he is saying because a special prosecutor was appointed, it means that the prosecutor was no longer the one in charge of the case and could not file the subsequent information. Generally, when a special prosecutor is appointed or a line prosecutor is appointed, it doesn't change things. So, you know, if you have a line prosecutor prosecuting, the head prosecutor is still involved. He's arguing that it kind of separated them out and the special prosecutor was siloed. So the information should have been signed by the special prosecutor. New charges couldn't be brought by the prosecutor over the entire uh, district. So that's his argument is that this was um, a procedural defect. And because of the procedural defect, you have to go back and start again. Response had been to file a second amended information, um, and it indicated that that cured the problem. The the issue we have with that is uh, we do not believe it does cure it because it's jurisdictional and because it's structural. And and what I mean by that is there were a myriad of actions taken um, by Ms. Carmack Altwise and Ms. Reed before the appointment of, of Ms. Morrissey and Mr. Lewis. Miss Reed being the previous special prosecutor on the case who was who subsequently stepped down, even though there are some arguments they couldn't have been the special prosecutor, not Miss Reed, the defendant. The defendant is Miss Gutierrez. Those included um, obtaining experts, interviewing witnesses, cutting a plea deal with Mr. Halls, uh, and then that plea and then deal dismissing after Baldwin. Miss um, Carmack always appointed Miss Reed and. Uh, Ms. Carmack Altwise, again, should have been out of the case at that point, but she was the one that signed off on that plea deal. Now, all of that has occurred in the backdrop, and it still is ongoing in the case. In other words, it's the same expert. Yes, I understand that the 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 spire uh, of the church is coming out of this dude's head. I get it. And it's, it's impossible now to just amend the charge and say that that all of that prior goes away because it doesn't. They amended the charge on June 22nd to go from just the involuntary manslaughter to the tampering with evidence charge. And that was filed under the current special prosecutor. So he's arguing that this thing was deficient all the way down. These prosecutors have done some weird stuff. And because it does not go away, there was a period in which uh, under the Hollenbeck case, there was no jurisdiction. Did, did do you just cite Hollenbeck? Is that the case? Like, like the Gwen Stefani song? Like, what? What? Uh, there was a uh, I'm prosecutor, teasing. a district attorney who should have back. stepped out, and she didn't. It always sound like Hollenbeck. And then there to was me. A, a legislator uh, representative who was trying to be a prosecutor and a representative at the same time. And yes, our, it does. We have asserted, Your Honor, that our Constitution does not allow that. So this case, this man is looking down at a laptop. That's and that's our, our argument now. If if the prosecutors wanted to start over, and I know it in some ways it seems a distinction without a difference, but they could file a new, a completely new information, not they an could. amended, just in that and start the case over. Um, but then they lose that, it if that it, would be something happens later. This court, under the case law, would that would be a dismissal without prejudice, and I think that's what the case law said. But what our, our point is, is we don't want, in the unlikely event of a conviction at trial, uh, this goes up on appeal. If there was no jurisdiction, there were problems getting to the second amendment information. Uh, I don't think anybody wants to do this case twice. Um, so uh, that's the reason we assert that. And we assert that, that this case uh, is, is still um, infected with that jurisdictional problem that started at the beginning. Now, Your Honor, the reason why we assert that this court should dismiss this with prejudice look jurisdiction is fair the he is saying this case is infected with a jurisdictional problem that cannot be cured from the beginning unless you start over and of course the prosecutors could refile that's a benefit for the defense but he's saying D- dismiss it with prejudice and we're going to find out why goes beyond that uh and i will tell the court at the outset the case law says that the court has inherent power to uh, and to do sanctions, to issue sanctions, but it's an exceptional case when a case would be dismissed, and that's what the case would say. So we have to establish it was a, that this is an exceptional case. The reason why we assert it is an exceptional case is that this case has, has received, uh, in my uh, 30 years of experience, more press attention than any case I've ever seen. 
uh, in the District of New Mexico. Sir, yeah, you needed a big fucking qualifier on that. This case has received more attention than I've ever seen in the District of New Mexico. Sir, sir, sir? This case has received minimal attention since Baldwin was yeeted out of it. It has received some attention, but I can qualify for you the cases that have received substantially more attention. It's been pervasive, it's been national, and it's been very prejudicial to uh, Ms. Gutierrez. The problem, Your Honor, is that The problem is on. your client was the armorer. That's the problem. Your client was the armorer. So when everybody looks at how a live round ended up on a movie set, the person they look to is the person whose job it was to make sure that that didn't happen. So that's why we've had a lot of uh, conversation about this particular case, because this, this tragic workplace accident should have never happened. On October 26th, this is five days after the accident, the district attorney and Ms. Reed uh, began a series of interviews in which they talked about uh, Ms. Gutierrez's guilt. They talked about her being reckless. They talked about uh, the fact that she didn't, in, her, in their minds, shake every round so that she was getting... <clears throat> if she had checked every round, would we be here, sir? Sir? Sir, if your client had checked every round, would we be here? Would we be here? Because do you know what she said in her interview? That she just kind of shook the box. This is the entire point. If your client had checked every round, would a woman be dead? Sir, I don't think they overcharged this, but she was in charge of the bullets she was in charge of the ammunition. I also think Dave Halls is largely culpable here, but they pled him out immediately. So it, I agree with him. I agree with him that the prosecution went a bit far in their interviews. Absolutely agree. But someone is culpable here your client is one of the people that are culpable here samantha said criminal negligence that's what's being charged what's being charged here for those of you that are newer to rust or haven't covered the other rust stuff with me is involuntary manslaughter which is essentially criminal culpability for an accident and we can i did a couple episodes about that standard and what that standard is not every jurisdiction has an involuntary manslaughter, like you didn't intend the bad thing to happen and then the bad thing happened and now you're charged with the death of another human. Not every jurisdiction has this charge, but it is um, it is absolutely what is being charged here. And then the tampering with evidence. What did she do? It's more of what she didn't do. She is the armorer on the set of Rust and on her watch, a live round ended up in a gun held by Alec Baldwin, pointed at the cinematographer that he fired and then killed the cinematographer. So how did live rounds get on set? No one has said, no one has said, no one has said how live rounds got on set. You know what they did say? They did say that this case still makes me mad. They said that the FBI chemically tested all of the rounds from the prop house and the live rounds on set and they aren't the same gunpowder. So if the live rounds didn't come from the prop house that provided the dummy rounds, where did they come from? It's literally the biggest question I have. So let us continue. Guilty. Uh, at that time, they had a press person uh, that Ms. Morrissey and Mr. Lewis have not carried over. But at that time, the press spokesman made several comments about this being uh, a reckless unsafe situation on set and that um i think the facts speak for themselves that this was a reckless unsafe situation on set i don't think that's a stretch because people shouldn't die on film sets and but for somebody being reckless and unsafe you don't die on a film set so 
Like it's not an act of God. It's not as if there was an earthquake that that shook down one of the buildings and then people were injured. But for this happening, that was the the issue with Miss Reed and at that time Mr. Baldwin. So those statements persisted. The other statements that persisted were wild, uh, unfounded rumors uh, that we had to combat. And, and it, it still is ongoing. For example, uh, very early in the case, there was this rumor that Ms. Gutierrez was plinking or firing live rounds on the set. Uh, not one witness here now, has come forward to substantiate that. Ms. Morrissey, to her credit, uh, we had a witness come in. We interviewed that person. That person said we have no personal knowledge of that happening. That was a, a rumor. And to this day, it's still a rumor. But that's been all over the national press. Uh, subsequent to that, and sir, what's that? What's the rumor about planking have to do with your motion to dismiss? Curious. And this goes into the second motion we filed, which was out of time, and it was out of time because we were responding to a pleading that was filed. Uh, shortly before that, in which there were a couple statements made. One was that Ms. Gutierrez had handed the key to a motorcycle to somebody who was then died in a, a wreck. And it was very emotional for Hannah um, Gutierrez because that was her boyfriend, uh, someone she was very close to at the time, but she didn't hand him the keys. In fact, his motorcycle was a kickstart motorcycle. So that, that statement, although it made it to the media, was not correct. There was also a statement made in that pleading uh, by the state that Ms. Uh, Gutierrez would often drink at night on the rough set, would drink heavily, and that she was, quote, likely hung over the day that this round went, went into the uh, firearm. Now, to date, there's been no witness to substantiate that. We asked for the witnesses to that. Um, there's been no witness to... He's arguing that some of the things that the prosecution has put into their pleadings are unsubstantiated rumors, and that because those are unsubstantiated rumors, it would support the court dismissing this with prejudice. This is not going to get dismissed with prejudice, but he's saying that the amount that the prosecution has put out in their filings is prejudicing their client. Say that. There's been the, and, and even if there was a witness say that, the idea of saying somebody is likely hungover. We'll talk over about the likely hungover. You can't trying to prove, prove that. that in court and what the standards would that be, I, I'd submit that wouldn't even be admissible. So that has gotten out there. And there's statements across the media now that Ms. Gutierrez was drunk the day that she uh, handled the firearm. That's absolutely incorrect. The other people we've interviewed, Sarah Zachary, or that have made statements, uh, have said she was not uh, impaired on set, that she was never impaired on set. So we have had this series of statements that have occurred and that has made it, um, in my estimation, impossible. Now, Judge, if, let's say that this had been just uh, in the Santa Fe uh, area, that this had come out of Santa Fe, New Mexico, and it had been a deluge of this amount of press, I think that it would be uh, probably a situation where venue might be changed to Rio or Reba or something not, like though. that. In this case, the problem is we can't change venue. This is a uh, national press. This isn't a change of menu vo motion, though, sir. This is a motion to dismiss the information. This is not a change of venue motion. Situation where these have gotten all over. People have heard it in Roswell, Albuquerque, Rio Riva. They've heard it all over the nation, and they keep coming back. So um, we filed this because of the idea of fundamental fairness and due process. That there's rules in place for for to protect against this. That. Prosecutors don't comment that somebody is guilty and that they include in a press statement that people are presumed innocent. And those, we see those all the time. Yes. They're presumed innocent and they're, they're innocent until they're proven guilty. But those weren't said in this case. What was said in this case is, uh, in essence, Hannah is guilty because she was reckless. And we're, we're going to prove that. Now, those were also said about Mr. Baldwin. He was then dismissed, however, and part of our motion goes into uh those ideas that, that there was problems with the evidence that um now he wasn't dismissed with prejudice uh the state said they might refile but they indicated that it was a modification of the firearm now we've never received a report on that and why that wouldn't also be exculpatory as to miss gutierrez it is. that that hasn't been produced so that's part of our um grounds that we cited in the in the motion as well but primarily your honor 
well, what we are saying is that one, it's a structural defect that requires um, at least a dismissal without prejudice to, to an essence third over um, so that we don't have that taint. Uh, and two, that this, sh this should be dismissed with prejudice for the other grounds cited in the motion. As a sanction. Now, this court also has the option to consider lesser sanctions if the court wants to. And that includes suppression of certain witnesses, including, for example, the expert. Um, the expert went on uh, television and made several statements. Really? Uh, including that, that this was a that. strictly liable situation. Now, we all know that is a... That standard is not correct. This is not a strict liability um, set of crimes that are charged against uh, Ms. Gutierrez. Uh, what is charged is required to prove the elements uh, beyond a reasonable doubt. But that statement was made by the expert. I know. We um, got so, y'all. We got from dicta to taint. I know. I know, chat. I know. I've seen a number of you talking about the glitches. I'm not seeing them on my end. It says that the stream health is good. I would either refresh or pop out and pop back in. Um, but no, they definitely don't want that taint, Your Honor. We we do not want, it, it's not gonna go away though. Re, restarting the case doesn't get it away from the media coverage that it's had. However, this case has not had nearly the same amount of um, publicity as some of the others that we've covered. Murdoch, particularly a hyper-local case with a, a tense amount of focus, um, multiple podcasts covering nothing but that case, dedicated coverage to just that case. And they still found a jury that was like, we haven't heard much about this. So this is not a problem here. Uh, we submit this court could uh, consider suppression of certain witnesses. Um, and that would include the expert that would possibly include Mr. Halls. Um, now, I, uh, at this point, Your Honor, I would also They never submit, should have pled out Mr. Halls. plea was entered uh, at a time when there was jurisdiction because Ms. Carmack Altwine signed that. Um, that uh, series of documents and the information for his plea. But with that aside, um, we submit this court could consider those lesser sanctions if this court were not inclined to, to This dismiss. court's not dismissing it with prejudice. If, it's not Your happening. Honor, I, I wanted to just summarize, Sir? and if this court had any questions, I, I don't want to go over everything in the briefs. I think you summarized it well, sir. Uh, I'd, I'd rather have um, Ms. Uh, Morrissey respond if you're finished. <laughs> yes, Your Honor, I am. Thank of you. Of course, like, I don't have any questions. I've read your briefing. I appreciate the summary for the uh, chat. The Ms. chat Your likes Honor, the summary. Are there particular issues that you want me to address, or should I just do a general recitation? I think, I think uh, he, he didn't uh, specifically state things. He talked about structural. Um, I think we go ahead and respond to the briefing. I think you could start with what he brought out here and then you could go into the briefing. It, sure, Your Honor. I, I first of all would uh, like to state that we are prior to a preliminary hearing. Yep. Uh, so motions to suppress this is evidence, wild. motions to dismiss. Uh, are very, very all limited. Uh, the, the, the court's powers premature are limited motioning. in terms of uh, a basis to dismiss a case prior to a preliminary hearing. Um, I understand Mr. Bowles's concerns about the contact that the previous prosecutors had with the press. Yep. We have addressed that issue it was in a lot. our response. Um, Ma and it we was have a lot. pointed out to the court that the initial statement made by the prosecutors was absolutely appropriate. It wasn't prejudicial. There was nothing wrong with it at all. Uh, in response to that, Mr. Bowles then participated in four, five, or six uh, of his own press interviews where he, he did? himself uh, began to give interviews and indicate that there was sabotage on the set, that some a disgruntled person sabotaged the set and put live rounds. This defendant filed that in their own motion um, that I covered ages ago. The, the defendant sued, Hannah Gutierrez sued the prop house and sabotage on set was brought up there. No, bulls, not balls.
His name is Bowles. Bowles, not balls. Bowles. Bowles. On the set, I can tell you, Your Honor, there is absolutely no evidence of that. Where did the round uh, come from? Can you tell us that? that? Mr. Bowles went on national news four or five times. In response to Mr. Bowles going on national news. These lawyers are sitting in court with the judge, well, on Zoom, with the judge fighting over who did what press releases. It's just such a, it's so different. It's like, well, the prosecutors might have made statements, but also he went on the media and made statements. He's allowed to respond, by the way, to the statements made by the prosecution. If the prosecution hadn't made statements, he would have been more limited in what he could say. But the prosecution gave like five press conferences before they did anything. It's like, we're going to do this. We're fixed into do this. We might could do that. We're, we're might could fix into do it. Like they gave so many interviews. Just do the, just do the thing five times and saying things that there is absolutely no evidence of the prosecution then responded and gave some press interviews and there is no prejudice to the defendant in this regard um all of these issues need to be hashed out at trial i will be the first person to agree that extrajudicial statements in this regard are not appropriate um, but that's not a reason to dismiss the case prior to a preliminary hearing. I agree with that. After those prosecutors have stepped down, new prosecutors have come in, reviewed the evidence, Added reviewed charges. more evidence than was originally available, I can tell the court. Um, and it, it's, it, it's difficult for me to understand the defense the lawyers are way too excited to do press. They should just have my job instead if they want to do that much press. You got to pick one. And his co-counsel you don't get to do both. Had with the press. Um, with regard to the structural issues, we believe that this has been cured. Uh, I think that Mr. Bowles had a very good point in his <laughs> I in his motion where I he can't indicated balls. that I this can't. information was signed by someone I'm sorry, Mr. who Bowles. was in an inappropriate co-counsel relationship with another prosecutor now i will tell the court i believe that they were acting in good faith wait what uh, i gotta back up i was laughing with about bowls balls i i i want to hear about the co-counsel relationship i'm sorry with regard to the structural issues we believe that this has been cured. Uh, I think that Mr. Bowles had a very good point in his in his motion where he indicated that this information was signed by someone who was in an inappropriate co-counsel relationship with another prosecutor. That makes sense. Now I will tell the court, I believe that they were acting in good faith, uh, believing that they could co-counsel and as soon as the court corrected them and said, in your estimation, they are not allowed to do that, that problem was remedied. And we filed a new criminal information after doing an independent review of the evidence. Not only did we do an independent review of the evidence, but we invited defense counsel to come to our office to provide us with any evidence that they thought we should consider when moving forward. Mr. Bowles did that. Mr. Baldwin's lawyers did that. Mr. Baldwin's lawyers flew to Santa Fe. We met with them in person. Were they on somebody's um, private chat? I've got questions. After taking into consideration everything that was provided to us by law enforcement, everything that was... Counsel's name is Bowles, like a, like bowling for soup, not balls. But the way she says it, I can't unhear balls now. So... We've already renamed the pickle balls for this this case, so eh, here we are. Provided to us by our own uh, investigation, and Everything none of them provided to us have by said counsel. where the bullet came from. Uh, we none made of the them. appropriate decisions. I understand that Mr. Bowles is upset that Mr. Baldwin has been dismissed. We don't have the firearms report yet, although they've told me that it's forthcoming. I hope to have it by the end of the week. I can. You have one firearm report because it's in the civil lawsuits. What other firearm report is there? Tell the court, as we indicated in our response, uh, the causation issues as they relate to Mr. Baldwin and the functionality of the firearm are different. Do not create causation problems for Ms. Gutierrez. I agree with that. That that is our legal opinion, 
And Mr. Bowles can certainly file an appropriate motion at a later date, post prelim. They're and the very court different can take cases. Evidence and testimony in that regard. Um, the Holland the case with regard to um, Baldwin and the case with regard to Gutierrez Reed are procedurally very different cases, and what they have to prove are very different cases. And if there was some issue with the weapon, it's going to be very, very hard to prosecute Baldwin with the weapon, even though he was holding it, even though he um, said that he pulled the trigger, even though he was the one pointing it at uh, Helena Hutchins, even though if he hadn't been holding that gun and pointing at Helena Hutchins, she wouldn't have died at that time. Um, the firearm being an issue is an issue. So that is a very different issue than did the armorer fail to adequately do her job? Because again, if the armorer had done her job, Baldwin's recklessness might not have mattered if there hadn't been a live round in the gun, right? If the gun had just been a, a gun with um, inert rounds in it, it wouldn't have caused this issue. It shouldn't have even had... Um, not the dummy rounds, but the blank rounds in it. It should have just had completely inert rounds in it or no rounds in it be because they were just blocking out a scene. But because it got loaded with a live round, all the rest of it became an issue. So I understand their legal argument. The case against Baldwin is difficult. Could a jury look at the case against Baldwin and say, but for you holding this gun, she wouldn't have died? Yes, but could a jury have also said, but you should have relied on the people down the road doing their job so that when you're holding the gun, it's safe. And those people are Dave Halls and Hannah Gutierrez-Reed. And then Dave Halls pled out immediately on this case. He's the one that handed the gun over. He is someone who is very culpable, but I think they were so eager to get Baldwin that they pled out Dave Halls early that case as i have pointed out in the response which means the armorer the one with the least experience on this movie set is going to be the one left holding the bag not the safety officer who failed who pled themselves out easily and quickly no the 20 something year old armorer is going to be the one left holding all of the criminal liability while the much more senior members on this movie set are not going to do i think she's culpable Yes. Do I think there are other people that are also culpable? Yes. Do I think they pled out halls to get to Baldwin because they didn't have an easy way to get to Baldwin? Yes. Does that seem like bullshit? You let me know Absolutely in the chat. Absolutely not on point for this issue. The Hollenbeck case was post prelim or grand jury indictment this case is bananas at this time what it was B -A -N -A -N -A -S. Uh, and, and the court dismissed the case without prejudice that case was promptly refiled and that person is now convicted of sex offenses uh that case in no way is supportive of what mr bowles is asking the court to do today um the 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 i would also say that the 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 criminal nope. charge itself indicates that the state believes that there is probable cause that Ms. Gutierrez acted recklessly. That's the criminal charge. So the fact that that's out in the public is just because that's what she's charged with. So the fact that those things are out there, it, we, we can't try this case in a vacuum. It is a high profile We shouldn't be case. trying it in the media. We can all do our best to not use the media to prejudice either side. I have been trying very hard to do that. I'm, I'm I will trying. continue to do that. I would ask that Mr. Bowles do the same. Um, I'm trying to you know, understand. Mr. Bowles indicated in his motion, essentially that his client is being unfairly prosecuted. Uh, and we responded to his complaints that his client is being unfairly prosecuted by indicating that we believe that she's absolutely being uh, fairly prosecuted, appropriately Others should be prosecuted. Too. Um, Mr. Bowles has indicated that he takes issue 
with the statements that I made in my response. Um, since, since these motions were filed, I actually obtained the police report from that car accident that, that, that we were referencing, that motorcycle accident. I think we uploaded it to Mr. Bowles' defense server. Um, it absolutely is supportive of, of what they uh, argued the notions that we put in our response with regard to she's Mr. like Halls, i said what i said and the fact that mr hall's plea was signed and handled by attorneys who mr hall's plea is a joke didn't have jurisdiction mr bowles knows that he doesn't have standing to assert that he does not <laughs> if mr hall's wants to withdraw That's his fair. plea Mr. Halls can file a motion to withdraw his plea. Which he hasn't his done. His lawyer can reach out to his me plea for my position. Is As Mr. Bowles no is well aware, I had absolutely nothing to do with any of those plea negotiations. When I initially came into this case, I asked if I could terminate that plea because I had not really had an opportunity to, to review all of the discovery. And no, you is, can't. Uh, extremely voluminous and the problem was you can't i couldn't do that offer an acceptance under the law that plea had already been signed yep. so when the plea is already signed we are bound by contract law essentially yep. so once i, I realized that. that the plea could had you already imagine been signed, could you imagine a world where a new prosecutor comes in and it's just like hey i know everybody agreed to this plea and y'all signed it i'm gonna yeet it out of here uh that's the government has to be held to the things that they agree to and so that is part of it i it, it it at least is moderately comforting hearing that this prosecutor looked at that plea deal and was like this is a bad idea but is now stuck by what previous prosecutors do and that happens a lot in prosecutorial offices because you're bound by what your colleagues do even if you don't agree but this prosecutor's like i'm stuck with what i've got and what i've got is a signed plea deal and that's why halls took that plea in halls's lawyer is like take this plea fucking immediately immediately because you never know what's going to happen it was out of my hands that plea proceeded we handled it appropriately we did the appropriate research and if mr halls is unhappy i welcome a motion to withdraw his plea uh there is He's not no unhappy. basis everyone else is unhappy to dismiss this case what mr bowles is asking you to do judge is essentially just give him more time to prepare for a preliminary hearing because he knows as i have told him if this court dismisses As I have this case without prejudice We're based on the uh, structural issues that Mr. Bowles is complaining of, I will file a new criminal information and a new case by the end of the day. I have reviewed all of the evidence in She's this She's like, case. I got that paper I ready. I feel very strongly about the prosecution of this defendant, and I believe Clearly. that all of the evidence supports our ongoing prosecution of this defendant. Thank you. Halls should yes, have been. Your Honor, your Honor, we are not, not have to been more allowed to play. And we are ready for. In fact, if that's Ms. Morrissey's um, intent to file refile today, we're ready to go next week. What my intent Great. is not to buy more time. My intent is that this um, this whole proceeding not be infected with jurisdictional and structural error, which I believe the state has now conceded. <laughs> uh, in terms of the in, in a little some bit. Of the comments made earlier that they've conceded that these prosecutors lacked authority at certain junctures, including in, in reaching a plea deal with Mr. Hall, who presumably he's going to be a witness in the case, and we're going to talk about his plea agreement during that testimony. Of course, Mr. Hall is going to be a witness in the case. That's the whole point of the plea agreement. Uh, some of these experts are hired. Some of the witnesses are interviewed by the prior prosecutors without jurisdiction. I think it's a real serious issue. And the prosecution can say it's all cured, but it's not all cured. It all has persisted. He's like, no, it's all a mess. Information. Uh, and that's our problem, Your Honor. And that's why we made the argument. It's not for buying any more time. It's because it's the, it's it's right. It's like, Your Honor, we'd like them to do Hollenbeck. it right. And under those cases and under this court's prior order with regard to special prosecutors and that statute. Uh, and real briefly on the, the press, the, the press statements made by the prosecutors were October 26th. Mine were early November. And Your Honor, what, what was stated was not just the language from the information indictment. There were statements made, and they're quoted in my brief, about Hannah being reckless, uh, Hannah 
Um, the previous prosecutors you know, did talk a lot. Not checking the rounds and, and leaving the impression she's guilty. And that no other defendant faces this, entering a trial, earning a proceeding. That's not true. Where the whole nation thinks she's drunk on set, thinks she's reckless, thinks she's handed keys to somebody with a motorcycle, which wouldn't even be admissible in a criminal trial. Agree that's not uh, I'm not sure why that was even put out there. Because they think it shows uh, And then the reckless. idea that she's drinking heavily on set with no witness, um, the idea that she, that none today, uh, and, and those matters that have been put in the press to just infect the idea that people think about her. That's what we're dealing with, and that's why I raised it, Your Honor. Sir, you can't sue them for defamation, though. And what he's arguing right now is that her reputation has been damaged by the things the prosecutors have said. Though prosecuting someone is reputationally damaging, even if they are acquitted, it can be. These allegations are still out there. The thing is, though, a woman died on a movie set because a live round was in a gun and it was your client's job to make sure that the bullets were in the gun and that they weren't live rounds, that they were either completely inert dummy rounds or they were blanks. And that is the point of this prosecution. Do I think they should have pled Dave Halls out so easily? No, I disagree with it completely. Do I think they should have let Baldwin go? I have mixed thoughts on that because it's not an easy prosecution on Baldwin, but I also think there's an argument for criminal negligence, but I also haven't seen what the weapons reports say. And if the weapons reports can't support a prosecution, then dismissing it is the proper thing to do. That is the just result. So. <sighs> All right, thank you all. I'm going to first address uh, the arguments that you put forth today, and then I'll um, address uh, some other ones. First of all, um, the the or the way you the order is not really it it was nuanced and it was not anything that really mattered until until you brought this up. I did not say that she was not authorized to prosecute. My question was which one. Okay, I'm the one that brought it up. And then I said, you have to pick. You either can prosecute this case or, or you can't prosecute this case, but you can't stay on as co-counsel. And that was my ruling. So I never, I never chose on the record which prosecutor, which one was not authorized. And in the order, you chose Mary Carmack Altweiss. And it was a subtle difference that the state signed off on and I signed off on oh, as, oh. as my order. Oh, oh. But that's, Sir. It, it's not reflective Whew. of that order. And and I'll put it on the record now. And if you all feel that Ms. Morrissey needs to do, provide an amended order to the court, then um, the I'm, judge happy, is not I'm happy, happy to with that. Either one can decide what to do. Hmm. That's not what the, the order did not say. She was not authorized. The, the, the ruling of the court was, I'm raising this because it says that you cannot prosecute and you're showing that you can. So now you're now now we're using an order that says she was not authorized and I minute. never decided whether she should or shouldn't use special counsel. So that's 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 a misstatement of the oral ruling although it's not a misstatement of the signed order. Um, secondly, uh, I will just say that case law uh, Hollenbeck is very dis distinct, distinctive. It's not at, at this stage. Hollenbeck being distinctive means um, this, this case is bananas, B-A-N-A-N-A-S. This is a great um, experiment in reading judicial body language. This is not going well for the moving party, the defense. And the court has distinguished the case. That means, look, your case is different than what's happening here. So I don't have to follow that ruling. We're not talking about dicta. I don't have to follow that ruling because that case is in a completely different stage of the proceedings. It's after the preliminary hearing. This is before the preliminary hearing. The judge is non non plot. The judge is, is not having any of this, which is why I'm kind of bummed that the Google meet doesn't show us everybody um, at the same time. Cause I would have liked to have seen the judge's face um, during the argument because, because sometimes you can tell a lot from reading a judge's face. Um, case law allows criminal informations to basically supersede 
um, what, what the criminal information that went on before. And you keep harping on the fact that she signed that criminal information. Well, as Ms. Morrissey says, it's if you're the party and the judge is like, you keep harping on this, you've lost that you've lost. So this is not getting granted. <laughs> you have, you've lost, sir. You keep harping on this, but it's the judge is just like, this is not what's happening. This is definitely a big, Per my last email energy from the judge you keep harping on this but that's not the law so no secured under state versus banali 99 new mexico 415 here's the law that i'm going to tell you cured. why it is. and i think it's we're cured. all very familiar with with this case that once you file an amended criminal information that you go forward with that amended criminal information so um the third criminal information cures uh, any jurisdictional issue with respect so to this is a non-issue um, is uh Ms. So just just also to stop banging on that about it criminal information um secondly or thirdly you have to be able to demonstrate as you recognize sir you've failed um material actual and substantial prejudice and i read and reread your brief because i was trying to understand what you were claiming was actual and substantial prejudice with respect to lacking prosecute i know i know he said that the prejudice was the prosecutor saying mean things about his client prosecutorial authority and you said they interviewed numerous witnesses they conducted investigations they retained expert witnesses they cut a plea deal with halls to testify and then you say it may be all but impossible now to unravel the extent to which one of those influenced halls which prosecutor ultimately made the decision on the deal, but think it was Carmack all twice. All but impossible now to unra unravel the extent to which- That's a different defendant. Which, uh, Carmack all twice. Inf this defense attorney, as to Hannah Gutierrez, can't argue what happened as to Halls. That is a completely different defendant, dealt with completely differently, and it, it's fucking irrelevant to this defendant. It's annoying for this defendant, but this defendant has no standing to argue, but you let him go and that's not right. Nope, nope, nope. Influence the prosecutorial decisions and expert lay and witness testimony with her involvement with Reed in pre-charging and after charging interviews. And I do not find that that's you have demonstrated prejudice. actual and substantial prejudice. Um, I mean, it, you, it just begs the question. I, interviewing numerous witnesses, what does that mean? I mean, even if Ms. Morrissey, even it, it was to, that this was dismissed, she would be relying on the same information tomorrow when she filed a new criminal information. Right. And so this, no, this doesn't, this, does this wouldn't even cure anything that you're arguing um, is actual and substantial prejudice. Right. And I don't think interviewing numerous witnesses, conducting investigations, retaining expert witnesses, it's not, cutting it's a plea deal with halls is not only not actual, but not substantial. And now you've added the media, which, which, uh, just a minute. Mr. Bowles, you're in trouble. Now you've added the media, which, um, was not necessarily in the lack of prosecutorial authority. And, um, I'll get to, get to that in a minute, but the, the, this was cured and, and on top of it, I don't think that was actual and substantial. And on top of that, I don't think there was exceptional that this, that this requires an exceptional remedy like dismissal. I think we stay the course. This, this is Ms. Ms. Morrissey and Mr. Lewis are tasked with the job of prosecuting this case. And as, and as an officer of the court, and I'm not, picking one over the other, but as an officer court, she did say she's conducting an independent investigation and there's no reason not to believe her as, as uh, she's finding more and more information out. So I'm denying that on prosecutorial authority. There were some other portions that I seem to think you separated into, and that was um, extrajudicial statements by the media. Um, That's not part of a motion to dismiss. This is at the preliminary stage. I think that um, I, it's not something that needs to be addressed at this point because the extrajudicial statements go to me as the fact finder in the preliminary examination. And so um, for you to say that basically you've tainted a jury, we're not even there yet. So um, I don't, I did not uh, think that an extrajudicial statements is- This judge uh, is like, sir, I am not tainted. 
do not describe the taint to me. We are not there yet. Not having I think it at that, all. Uh, has tainted the preliminary examination, and um, and that's that's the only thing before me right now. We don't we're, we're not off the ground yet. Um, we're not we're not I'm even happy on to the go into the others yet. that you did not address here. Would you like me to go into pre accusation delay, selective yes. prosecution, evidentiary yes. issues? Yes. Do it all. Or did you want to uh, push to argue? No, do it all. Uh, yes, Your Honor, if you if you would. I didn't want to uh, belabor it because it's Mention it all. what we've had in our brief. All right. Well, I'll, so I will address these on the briefings. Is that fine with you all? Cheers, Your, yes, Honor. Your Honor. Just address it on the briefings. Let's Ms. go. Morrissey, Mr. Lewis? Certainly, Your Honor. All right. So then the next um, was violations of due process rights, notice, opportunity to be heard, and decision by a neutral decision maker against legal search and seizure. Those were those were the other uh, portions. I already addressed extrajudicial statements, pre-accusation delay. Um, you arguing that there's prejudice to defendant as a result of the d delay. Well, first of all, there has to be prejudice, and it has to be intentional delay by the state to gain no. tactical advantage. And um, you say that on June 9th, 2022, there was a special prosecutor working on the case, and then from the um, incident, October 21st of 2021 to January 31st of 23, when, when it was announced, uh, the charges were announced, um, they used um, this time frame to achieve maximum effect with a national national audience and potential jury pool in New Mexico. Again, this is, uh, you're, so nope. you're basically saying free accusation that they were attempting to taint uh, the media pool. Um, I've got this uh, State versus Fierro 2014 NMCA4, and you need more than conjecture, vague and conclusory allegations of prejudice resulting from the uh, passage of time. Defendant must be able to show definite and not speculative prejudice. More and at than this point, conjecture. your assertion that you're taining the jury pool is ahead of the game and at this point speculative. And just on the side, there are certainly ways you can see, see whether the jury, the, if it gets to that point, whether the jury pool has been tainted, especially interrogatories, uh, extensive board there. Selective Don't prosecution. Um, this was to help her campaign, nothing more than, oh, you claim that this was, um, that she was selectively prosecuted because um, everybody was prosecuted because of Reeve wanted to advance her ca campaign, and that it's demonstrated by giving Hall a, a, a plea deal. And um, even though he was safety coordinator, and that it was based on Baldwin's celebrity status. And it's a bad plea deal, but everybody stuck with it. That's not selective prosecution of her. She needs to ask for a plea deal. Under State versus uh, Vias, 2002, and NMCA 14, um, and I, I'm the, I know you aren't all surprised by the, by these cases. I think they were in one or one of your briefs. They pled out halls to get to Baldwin, not. But you That's need all. a discriminatory discriminatory effect and a discriminatory purpose. Okay, and to show a discriminatory purpose, you have to prove that she's been selected based on in an intentional, purposeful discrimination stemming from imper impermissible considerations such as race, religion, exercise of a constitutionally protected right. It does not pass muster under selective prosecution. And then we've got evidentiary issues, which you broke down into illegal search and seizure, destruction, and exculpatory. The destruction goes well, to the weapon. Well, number one, um, under Aon, I think that's how you pronounce it, 2002 NMCA 3, which was cited by the state. Um, this is not a preliminary examination. It's not the time to test the propriety of the evidence. It's, um, it is, uh, it is, it's not to determine whether evidence was illegally seized pursuant to search warrants or any other way. It's not what we do with destroyed evidence. This is not ripe for this type of, uh, these types of issues. That's very clear under Aon. You did not bring this up in a preliminary examination. You get, the, the court cannot be sidetracked this way. And with respect to uh, hmm. exculpatory information, certainly um, um, you have not gone through here what you consider to be exculpatory uh, information, but um, you continue to raise um, uh, Reeves' email um, which he, which he has keeps been attaching 
to you. Um, um, uh, uh, Ms. Carmack also is testing a gun, uh, which which has been uh, um, conveyed to you, and um, I don't think is exculpatory information because certainly it has to um, under exculpatory on defining the grand jury. It's very strict. Um, exculpatory information has to be direct, can't be circumstantial. Even under a general exculpatory information of um, deprives or reduces, um, disproves or reduces a charge. I haven't heard, I don't see any this of this not disproving any of it. the charge against um, uh, Hannah Gutierrez Reed. The fact that Reed said, LOL, I want to, you know, improve my campaign, or Ms. Carmack Altois testing some old gun in her office, and then you're asserting sort of mixing but the firearm um searing and the uh failure to take the cart uh where um secure the scene and, and, and take the cart and then fingerprinting the uh for dna the bullets these you you've just asserted these you haven't you haven't done anything that would uh compel the court to say yes this is exculpatory information and also you've been given it so I'm not saying that there may not be grounds as you proceed in the preliminary exam um, and you, you ask things on cross-examination and you learn um, that, that you're missing something. Uh, I'm, I'm not closing the door to that. I'm just addressing some of these things. It has not been flushed out enough. Again, I think that you all are bound by the preliminary examination rule and, um, and uh, Material to the preparation of the defense are intended for use by the like prosecution. You've been given everything, Certainly sir. implied what that is exculpatory information, and I'm not you hearing that you're what getting. you've raised uh, reaches the level it. of exculpatory, or that it is, or you've been deprived of it. Except um, maybe some of that, the, the three things of firearm. Well, the the prop prop. Uh, uh, it's cart, a firearm. That's not necessarily oh, the within the cart. state. These are two. Um, there's too many layers and you can't just assert that these are exculpatory and they're not being provided to you because it begs the question. You haven't demonstrated to me how it deprives you. I mean, it, it um, I keep saying deprived, disproves or reduces the charges against her. So I think I've covered everything. Have I not covered everything? Uh, yes, Your Honor, I believe you have. It was a cumulative error at the end, but it, you addressed that. You wanted her to go over it, sir. She yeah. did. Thank you, Mr. Bowles. She covered it, Mr. Um, Bowles. I think that we should, um, I think that I, I would like to amend the order. Um, do we need a, a hearing on that? or, or, or Just do it. I think, um, and I, and I uh, accept that uh, you did prepare it, and I, and I know that you've prepared it um, to, the be to, be to the best of your knowledge and memory, and it's a very subtle difference and i and um do we want a hearing on that or do or or um just do it now or i just i just I, don't think I, it was a, it was a if my decision was stay in get rid of the special prosecutor or get out and stay the course with the new special prosecutor remember it came up when she wanted to swear in ms morrissey yes i i do remember your honor and i don't believe we need another hearing because that is what the court said and i remember that uh, it was an either or, but I, I don't, I, in preparing that order, I didn't remember the precise, but that is correct. You did say that. And, and so Thank I don't, you, we, don't right. we don't need another hearing. Yeah. Okay. Just right. fix it. Because then. I have basically typed this out myself and done all this, I will do the order on this so that um, I notice you will be taking Quick notes there, Mr. Lewis. <laughs> yes, I have them, Judge. <laughs> okay, so um, I'll do the order and I'll amend the order. All right? Yes, Your Honor. Is there anything else before the court? No, Your Honor. I think Not, just, I, uh, just for the record, um, because you have addressed everything uh, in the state's favor, I don't think our motion to, I think our motion to strike at this point is moot. So, yeah. okay. Yes, thank you for that. And then, um, Ms. Morrissey, please prepare the order that you're withdrawing your um, motion for protective order. Yes, and I'll see you, um, I'll see you, uh, what is Tuesday? Wednesday? Wednesday? Next Wednesday? Wednesday? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Your Honor, real right. quick, uh -huh. uh, just one, one point, and, and this court, I think, allowed it. Uh, on the 9th, when we start, um, 
Mr. Bullion and I had, unfortunately, another hearing just for approximately 45 minutes. Sir. That and uh, one of us, if it's with this court's permission, will just uh, pop out to handle that and pop back in. That's but fine. I just wanted to, okay. Right. I, I had received an email requesting that you both disappeared, and it was problematic for the court because it starts at 8.30, and then in an hour we're stalled. So I had a problem with that. Okay. Yes, All right. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Thank Pack you for your, your presentations. Thank you. All right, we're, you we're going to New Mexico next week. Pack your bags, ladies and gentlemen, because next week we will be in New Mexico for the Rust preliminary hearing that is going forward after the judge denied all of these motions. So what we're going to do is answer questions now that we've gone through that hearing i'm going to give a summary hopefully that's helpful and next week um my podcast will be a little bit more of a rust summary so that everybody's ready to go for a week long preliminary hearing in new mexico i i really hope it doesn't take that long most preliminary hearings take an hour <laughs> two three this preliminary hearing witness list is substantial they're going to bring in industry experts to talk about the job of an armorer they look like they're going to bring in people on set dave halls is on that witness list it is going to be a long week i it's going to feel it seems by the witness list this is going to feel like a trial so we have a week of preliminary hearing and again a week is so long for a prelim. I hope it's done faster than that. Like, can we just, can we just get two days? Like we do, do we really need it? Do we really need it? Um, Catalina said, but Baldwin isn't included in the preliminary hearing. No, Baldwin is not being prosecuted at the moment. So Baldwin is not being prosecuted at the moment at all. Lara said, what are the chances they don't call halls during the actual trial? I think it's, um, I think even if the prosecution didn't, the defense would. So let's swoop real quick. We're gonna do a, uh, a quick summary of what happened in court and then get to Q&A. Today in court, well, Zoom court or Google Meets court or whatever, the defense for armorer Hannah Gutierrez-Reed was arguing that the case should be dismissed based mostly on procedural defects, arguing that the Previous informations were signed by the acting prosecutor in New Mexico, but at that time, a special prosecutor had already been procured on set, or not on set, goodness, that's what happens with Russ, but a special prosecutor had already been uh, brought in on the case, and you can't have both in charge. The court's like, you can't act as co-counsel. This is either the special prosecutor's case, or this is the prosecuting agency's case, but it is not both. And so he's like, that's a procedural defect. These informations need to be yeeted. And the court said, once a new information is filed, it gets rid of everything that came before. And we're working off the new information. There is a third new information that was filed on June 22nd, 2023 by this current special prosecutor, Carrie Morrissey. That is the prosecutor going forward. That is the controlling document. And because that is the controlling document, every defect before is cured. So I don't want to hear you talking to me about the media taint in this case and getting to a jury and blah, 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 blah. I want to talk about what's happening before this preliminary hearing that is happening next week. So the motion to dismiss was denied. The court talked about um, their order with regard to which prosecutors were serving at the time and said all of this is fixed with the new information. And the new information alleges both the tampering with the evidence and the involuntary manslaughter. I saw a lot of questions about the tampering with the evidence. I'm gonna dive into it more next week as we get ready for the Rust preliminary hearing, but it has to do with the armor allegedly giving narcotics to another person so that it was not on the armorer's person when she was um, interviewed by police, arrested, whatever. So we'll go through the facts of that more in, in next week's podcast. I, the, the spirit of the law of tampering with evidence and what seems to be charged here are interesting um and we will see if they have the person who the narcotics were handed to and whether or not um 
they come in and say, yes, she gave this to me. So with all of that, this is going to a very long preliminary hearing. The standard at preliminary hearing is, is probable cause decided by the judge. Is there enough here to believe that Hannah Gutierrez did not do her job adequately and in fact did it with recklessness? And I think the argument is that her job as the armorer means that if a live round ends up in the gun with no intervening factor, that it is almost, the thing is almost evidence of itself. The argument also there though is what about Dave Halls? Because Dave Halls is the one who handed the gun to Baldwin on set. The armorer, they say due to COVID uh, precautions, was kept out of the immediate location where the gun was being handled by Baldwin and Dave Halls. So again, how did Dave Halls get the, the, the plea deal of the plea deals with it's like, you're kind of on probation for a minute and you need to come and testify. And again, I think it's because Dave Halls was the person who could testify against Baldwin. But when we're looking at levels of culpability, I think Halls and Gutierrez Reed are at a higher level of culpability than Baldwin legally in this circumstance, even though Baldwin was holding the gun, it was the job of the other two to ensure the gun was safe by the time it got into Baldwin's hand. Baldwin shouldn't have been positioning a gun directly at a human being either way. However, Halls should not have handed him a gun that he also hadn't checked. Halls should still be in this prosecution and isn't. Gutierrez Reed should be in this prosecution and is. Baldwin, again, there's, there's, there's a mix for me because again, but for him pulling the trigger, no one gets shot if he's not pointing it at someone. But, but for the other two not doing their job, there's no live round in the gun. So I can understand, I can understand how the prosecution got to dismissing him at this case because we don't have the report on the gun. If the gun was faulty, then I it's going to be very hard for them to prosecute it. So even if they believe Baldwin uh, should be criminally culpable, should be liable. If they can't prove that beyond a reasonable doubt, they should not be pursuing the prosecution. So I, I understand. Um, Ashley said, why didn't Baldwin safety check the gun himself? It seems that there could be a split in experts on whether Baldwin should have or should not have split within, um, within acting. So the defense for Baldwin would be, he was told by Halls not to check it himself. Halls checked it and handed it to him and said it was safe and it was Halls job. So that it was Hall's job and then Hannah Gutierrez's job. So some actors absolutely say that they check it or make it be checked in front of them. That didn't happen on this set. And again, I think there is lots of argument for moral culpability for Baldwin. I can see where the prosecution was struggling with legal culpability. I'm very curious as to what the gun reports say that they are waiting for. Um, and I understand that this would be a very difficult prosecution and a, a very difficult prosecution. Cause I understand that you can have a jury look at that and go, yes, he shouldn't have pointed a weapon at somebody, but these other two should have made sure that weapon was safe before it got in his hands. The thing that distresses me most about this case is we still do not know where this live round came from at all, at all. Um, Drea said, didn't Jensen always check his weapon though? Yes. And lots of actors have said that they do require that their weapons are checked in front of them or that they check their weapon. Um, what we see in this, this case is an absolute failure on this movie set. And when I covered the, um, safety report, it's not OSHA, it's the New Mexico version of OSHA. But when I covered the safety report, it was a scathing report mostly pointed at Dave Halls for failing to address previous issues of gun safety on set because there were previous issues of gun safety on set. Lara, Halls can't refuse to testify based on his plea deal. So, Anna, let's just, uh, let me let me roll our clip of FAC around. Let's get to questions. You guys have a lot of questions. I hopefully have answers. We're gonna, we're gonna FAC around and then I'm going to wrap and get some lunch. <music> All right. So, um, 
Debbie says, I'm packing now. Should I bring a formal gown, a swimsuit? I think maybe a swimsuit for the evening. It seems like it might be hot in New Mexico this time of year, but also for court, just comfortable court attire to sit and watch court. Maybe a notepad, some colored pens, that. Um, Jules asked, how is the uh, new gun review when destroyed the first one? I think, Jules, what you're asking is, how is there a new report regarding the weapon when the weapon was destroyed during the previous testing? I don't know how destroyed it was during the previous testing. It was inoperable, but I, I don't know if the entire thing just like shattered. So we're going to have to wait and see that report um, and see what report is coming out. So we're, we're going to have to wait and see on that and see what we learn about the gun. But yes, there was destructive testing to the fact where the gun was not operable for future testing, but it doesn't mean there's other parts of the gun that they couldn't test. We'll have to see what testing comes back when they asked for more testing on the weapon. Dr. Moo, thank you. The allegations in Shade Set is, I think, delightful, and I'm so glad that you like it. Uh, kick motorcycles need a key to run the electrical. We heard a lot about this motorcycle. The prosecution put in the allegation that kind of Hannah Gutierrez Reed is, is reckless. And in fact, she handed the keys to her, it seemed like boyfriend at the time, to go get on a motorcycle. And he ended up in a collision, a fatal motorcycle collision. And her defense attorney took a lot of issue with that and the way it was presented. And the prosecution's like, no, we've gone through the police reports. So they were talking about whether or not Hannah Gutierrez Reed has act, acted recklessly in the past and whether this is like a, a continuation of recklessness. Um, Carbonized Stardust said, but what about Baldwin's responsibility as a producer? They're not charging any other producer criminally. All the civil lawsuits are still going on, and I think that's where we will see him more held responsible as a producer in all the civil lawsuits. But it would be hard to argue his role as a producer and not charge all the other producers if you are charging him criminally for that failure, not because he was holding the gun. It would be much, I think, much more difficult. Will they discuss the Bullock forensics? They should be discussing it at prelim, I hope. I hope. Emma, question, how do you focus and retain information when a judge rambles like this? Is it easier when you understand the topic? Yes. This, the judge, the judge is responding to things that were written. So everyone's on the same page in that hearing, but without having gone through all the writing and kind of internalizing it as your own case, the judge is responding to things that are very much important to them. It's like if you are trying to explain the ninth season of Vanderpump Rules to someone who's never watched it, and they're just like, wait, what? But if you were explaining that to someone who had watched all the seasons, they're like, same page, same page. It's just the base knowledge is, is very helpful. Why isn't anybody who handled the gun after her not being charged for also failing to check the rounds? That's just basic gun safety. They charged Dave Halls and her. It seems that those are the only two people that handled the gun other than Baldwin, who they charged and dismissed, if that makes sense. Um, all right. So Jennifer, thank you. Thank you so much, Emily, for all you do. I'm dying and you help me. I, I hope you're not dying, Jennifer. I hope that that is a, 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 um, a, a euphemism, but we are here. The Lawnards are here and I hope that you are well, but I, I'm glad, I'm glad to help. So I know that there though are some in our audience that are, um, because we have a, we have a wide and diverse audience. Um, Alita said question, what does moot mean? It means it is no longer an issue. It is a moot point. It is nullified. It is not, not a point, not a thing any longer. It's already been handled. So it doesn't need to be handled again. Question, since this is a projected one week prelim, what is the shortest or longest amount of time you've spent in front of a judge for a hearing and or trial? I mean, there was one trial that we did multiple retrials of. So I was before the same judge on the same case for years um, dealing with that particular case. The longest trial I've done is multiple weeks, but not into multiple months. I can't remember if it was five or six weeks, but not into like a full, full two months. The longest preliminary hearing I did was maybe two days. And even then it was like, fuck man, get me out of this. I've done prelims in 20 minutes. Um, I've done a trial in a day, like pick a jury, open witnesses, close verdict. I've done a trial in a day. 
I have had juries come back in 10, 15 minutes on cases. I've done trials in two, three days. Um, a lot of my cases were pretty quick and that they can be that way. A lot of cases are. The, the way the Shabiznis trial went down was much more typical of the types of cases I handled, even homicide cases where they can go fairly quickly. Longer, more drawn out trials are painful for everyone. And sometimes are, um, sometimes we're, we're benefited by brevity. I've had prelims last much shorter than any of my li live streams. These live streams have lasted longer. Should have said that the other way. These live streams last longer than most of my um, preliminary hearings that I did. There was a day where I think I did 15 preliminary hearings in a court day. It was wild. It was wild. Just here, I'm 40 tomorrow and I think I'm losing it already. You are not. This was a, this was just this. Question, can a lawyer see the judge's face? Yes, they can. Yes, they can. And they should know what's coming. Question, could the victim's child still sue Baldwin when they grow up? No. There is a guardian ad litem appointed with regard to the minor child of Helena Hutchins who is dealing with um who is dealing with all of the civil cases so the guardian ad litem is there to make sure that if because part of the civil case is resolved in the wrongful death case the guardian ad litem is to represent the interests of the child but no once that's dealt with that is dealt with so you can't bring it back up again if that i hope that made sense the way that i said it um Question with the new prosecutors in place for this case, can they accept plea deal, accepted plea deals be thrown out? No, and you actually heard that come up in this hearing. It cannot. The government is held by what they did because then if the government is like, hey, we've decided to plea with you, here's this agreement. And then a new prosecutor comes in and is like, ha ha, just kidding. It can violate your constitutional rights. The government is seen as kind of one entity. Like the prosecutors are one entity, even though there's multiple different prosecutors. So you can't just undo what somebody else did, which is why these things need to be taken seriously. Questions, when will we see the EDB Airlines bumper? I hadn't even thought of that. Hmm. Question, who is Toddy Westbrook suing again? Her former business partner, Clark Swanson, which we need to, we need to circle back. We need to circle back to Nevada and check in on that case. It's been a minute. Um, Blaze Goddess, it's your birthday. Go shorty to everybody in the chat, not just Blaze Goddess. But to everybody in the chat celebrating a birthday. Go shorty, it's your birthday. We're gonna party like it's your birthday. I'm honestly gonna go play Pokemon later like it's your birthday. And I don't give a fuck because it's your birthday. There we go. I could I could keep going. I'm not I'm not going to. Julia said, Emily, what do you think of her? I think you're talking about the prosecutor calling Eric Hunley and demanding his source and threatening when he said no. I don't know anything about that, Julia. But this came in and I flagged it because it came in when we were talking about the prosecutor. I know nothing about that. I need to go look. Um, I, I need to go look. If you if you see something on that, will you tag me on it? I want to go look at that. Um, because prosecutors can't, you can't just demand somebody's source, especially if it's media reporting. Um, yeah. It's not the job of the media to help the uh, the prosecution. So anyway, and threatening when he said, no, I will go take a look at that. I'm, I'm sure there's a video on Eric's channel then. Any idea where did the bullet box come from? No, none, no idea. How a bullet ended up on this set is deeply disturbing to me. And we still don't have an answer. From your earlier stream, you can cold brew tea. <laughs> I might, I just want cold brew coffee. That's what I want. And I might just go get it. It's not too late for coffee. Happy uh, Lunasaw. Celebrate the first harvest by eating all of the bread. I love this holiday. I need to know more. <laughs> Yay. Can we eat it with cheese? Aren't we a full moon today too? Aren't we? Aren't, isn't today? Aren't we full moony today on the first of the month? Thank you for our, such a loving community. Carrie, thank the law nerds for such a loving community. I can only ask for the rules to be respected. The mods can only ask for the rules to be respected. I mean, we do occasionally yeet people that refuse to respect the rules. That does, that does happen sometimes, but it's all of you that help because really we're here to have a conversation and all of you do that. So it's, it's fantastic. I think we need a lawyer cat callback. Maybe your honor, I'm here live. I just can't hear you. Hello, <laughs> it's me you're looking for. It, it was getting ready to turn into a, can you hear me now? 
Leanne gets crafty, said, damn, told TA I wanted to fly to Las Vegas, New Mexico, and she did my flight to Las Vegas, Nevada, running a vehicle now and driving over nine hours. Look, you know that I've done this myself when I meant to fly to um, Charleston and I flew myself to Charlotte. I did that on my own, but it was only for me, thankfully, like a three and a half hour drive when I rented a vehicle and had to drive nine hours is not delightful at all. I hope you see many roadside curiosities and attractions, but I am so sorry that you are now having to drive from Nevada to New Mexico, especially if New Mexico is closer to your 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 origination point and you are now having to double back. That's so frustrating and I'm sorry there's not a flight between Vegas and New Mexico for you. Happy spending my morning with you. It's been a bad day. I'm sorry. I get it. I've been so grumpy lately. So grumpy. Um, Shania said, a semester in legalese. Love your content. Well, thank you. That six months is a full semester of legalese. Um, Jess said, is this the last of the Rust lawsuits? This is the only Rust prosecution. There are so many lawsuits, civil and otherwise, that are ongoing. So many lawsuits. So many. Surely there was an internal investigation about the live ammo on set. There was an investigation from the FBI, there was an investigation from the like workplace safety uh, agency in Nevada that found horrendous failures. Nothing has come up with why there was live ammo on this set. Nothing. Why was there a live round? Don't know. Who handed it to Alec? Dave Halls. How a live round got on this set is bananas. I really think the live round mystery is the true nut of this and the state has completely fumbled and will continue to do so. It really is finding out how that live round got on set is really the most important thing. Um, was intentional plant of live round ever suspected? It has been discussed. The, um, it was dis sabotage of the set was discussed by Baldwin in his interview. It was discussed not his police interview, his interview, um, his media interview. It's come up with Hannah Gutierrez's attorney. It came up in Hannah Gutierrez's lawsuit against the prop house. It has come up, but it's wild. Something in the stars are telling me this case will be dismissed. Don't you think, Emily? I don't know what will happen with this case once it gets past prelim. If I'm Hannah Gutierrez Reed after it gets past prelim, I would try to settle the case. Um, Lyndon said a friend came to visit from LA a couple weeks ago, SAG member, and we both wondered how this movie is still a thing. Agree with you. I don't know how they're still making this movie. I wonder if the movie is now shut down because of the, because of the strike, because it restarted filming. Um, it restarted filming. I don't know if they finished, but it restarted filming a few months back. Would Baldwin's fault be similar if he was handed keys to a faulty car on set, told it was good, drove like a lunatic, car broke down and killed someone. Um, there would need to be more facts with that about what the industry standards are for stunt driving and what actually happened. The, the, the problem is we are blending like gun safety and what happens on a set. And so if the car is faulty, assuming the gun is faulty because i've seen mixed reports on it but if the car is faulty and he went to go hit stop while the car was aimed at somebody he went to go hit the brake and the brakes failed and then he ran over somebody it could be reckless criminally reckless to aim a vehicle at somebody while driving towards them and, but again not checking the brakes not his job just like they're going to argue not checking the gun not his fault the thing is there is not there is not a clear for me, clear um, rule on who checks the gun, who doesn't check the gun. And it seems that there are, there are mixed opinions on that, if that makes sense. Um, Ippy Fluffy said, am I right that there wasn't the only, that it was, let me try that again. I have done that badly. Am I right? It also wasn't the only live round. I think there were over 20 live rounds found on set. Some of them were in Baldwin's like bandolier. Some of them were on the prop cart. There were live rounds throughout the set. How did Baldwin get off of charges? The prosecution dismissed them. They can refile them, but the prosecution dismissed them. Having a latched mermaid. I'm so glad. 
I'm so glad rest is interesting to y'all. Why was any live round allowed on property hmm? in Albuquerque? And what came across was random arms firing, bad production, poor safety standards, props not having enough time to focus. It's this set was a mess and it was unsafe. Today's streams have brought joy with fun words. Yes, today's streams are brought to you by the word balls, <laughs> dicta, and taint. <laughs> Those are our letters and words for the day. This is a difficult case because there's we're we're well deep into parsing legality and morality on this case and culpability and what happens when accidents are criminal accidents but we're there's when there's criminal accidents that then have to deal with experts how that gets prosecuted who's responsible for it this again this is a difficult case not all jurisdictions have this type of a negligent homicide statute where it really is the um the the criminal recklessness and trying to prove a criminal recklessness standard and we're i go through that early early on in my breakdown of this case what that standard is what the um what the law says in new mexico and when i go over this next time we will cover that one more time so next week on the podcast I will be going over all the litigation that's happened in Rust to get ready for the preliminary hearing, and I will be covering the preliminary hearing here. I hope the court carries it the same way they've been carrying it, so that is my intention. My intention is to cover that prelim. If you do not want to miss my live trial coverage, but sometimes you don't want to cover every single topic that I do, I completely get it. Law nerd alert. I will see what you guys think. Please let me know in the comments how it worked for you splitting up the two different streams so that like the Coburger stuff is all in its spot and then this live hearing is in its spot but sign up at lawnerdalert.com because we are going to be changing up our live schedule while we do live court coverage for this preliminary hearing i just want to know i want to know how the fuck did a live round end up on this set i want to know and i hope this preliminary hearing gets us a little closer to knowing i don't know if it will or if it won't but i want to know so if you want us to keep you in the loop, lawnardalert.com, just let me know or just go sign up. It is a, a real easy sign up with your email address. Of course, we don't sell your information. We just use that to keep you in the loop of what I'm doing here. So with all of it, thank you for being here. Keep me posted. I see all of you letting me know how you like the split up streams versus, versus not. Um, also for the replay crew, put that down in the comments. Carbonized Stardust, thank you for all the gifted memberships. We have some members live stuff coming up. It is a new month, so I will keep you posted on the members only live streams. Some of that will have to shift and we will go from there. I see one last question that I wanted to address from Buttercup. Maybe the ammo company will be blamed. No, the FBI tested the rounds and determined that the live rounds did not come from the prop house that delivered the ammo to the set. <sighs> so then how did they get there? and who brought them onto set? That is the question I wanna know. That is the question I wanna know above all else. So with all of that, Lawnards, thank you for being here. Thank you for being Lawnards. I've gotta go get some food and I will see you in the next one. Bye. You can find all the Lawnard goodies at lawnardshop.com. Connect with me on social media at the Emily D. Baker. And don't forget to check out my podcasts, The Emily Show, and the new podcast, Quick Bits, summarizing everything I talk about on my Tuesday and Thursday live streams. You know, when you only have time for just the Quick Bits.